Now, Education Beyond 94 always gets me excited because we look to explore, break down and understand the South African education system and opportunities therein. And you know by now that is something that I am incredibly passionate about. And of course, on Community Pulse, we are passionate about. So while we learn about subject choices, uh, experiences of learners, we also learn from those who made it within the working world. Today, we are asking the question, how do you become a national park ranger? Joining us in studio this morning we have Bulilani Jonas who is a senior section ranger and responsible for Tukai, Nurtuk and the Silver Mine section of the Table Mountain National Park. Bulilani, thank you so much for taking time off from park ranging and joining us this morning. Welcome and good morning. Good morning and thank you so much uh, for the opportunity and invitation for this interview. I must say uh, I've been looking forward to it until, until this morning. <laughs> well, we are certainly happy that 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 you can join us, and I'm I'm wondering, you know, um, something like like park ranging, and and I was telling you that now of that is the first time. I mean, we've spoken uh, to 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 many other professionals on on this particular segment. It's the first for us to speak to a park ranger, and I have to ask you: Is it something um, that you always aspire to? Da- tell us a little bit about your background and what made you or what inspired you to become a park ranger. Okay, thank you for that question. Yeah, <clears throat> I grew up in uh, in a small town called Tofenwaba, and that is, I think, it's about sixty kilometers away from Queenstown in the Eastern Cape. Okay. It's a very small town, relatively uh, very small town, but uh, rich in history because that's where uh, uh, Krizani uh, was born and grew up, and then that's also where the late chief, uh, late chief uh, Katie Matanzima, also came from. So I'm from the same uh, uh, a hometown with them. So growing uh, growing up that time in Eastern Cape, uh, we grew up uh, as as cattle headers looking after the kettles and uh, sheep and goats and uh, subsistence farming in general, going to fields, plowing maize, meal and sorghum for, for, as a basic way for, for our survival at the time. Not knowing that uh, looking after the kettles, uh, moving them from this area to that area, depending on the season and availability on, on the, of the food in the field, it, that was preparing us or was preparing me for to be a park ranger, ranger. to be a park ranger, yeah. So it was mainly agriculture, subsistence agriculture. If you can, if you look at it that way, but it was also a, 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 a element of conservation because the meat was very scarce at the time back in the days 19, 1986, 87, where we grew up, we were still young. We have to go up to the mountains to to hunt uh, your jack holes, your, your wild game. Uh, we also, in terms of if one is sick, we, hospitals are very far from, oh. from where we stay. And was our grandparents and our elders, they will send us to the mountains and search for medicinal plants, sure. like your impepo incense and uh, other medicinal plants that we, we will use. We will use to dig bulbs and then we will make, uh, our elders will make uh, medicinal plants that we will use to heal without even going to the doctor. So you can see now, way that 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 all uh, is, is linked from going to hunt in order you to get the meat uh, and then also going to plow uh, fields of maize meal in order for you to get maize in order you to, to get food as a family so money was never really a thing there we, we could do everything by ourselves so not aware that that was preparing us to be mm. to be to be rangers. It to means be I was I grew up as a ranger. I was going to say <laughs> I was going to say uh, you were already trained by the time yeah I suppose by the time by the time you're grown up. I mean I'm fascinated also by the idea that uh, when you say even when one gets sick or even when there's any type of condition you know ailment or so uh, or hospitals and doctors were. Um, it was it was unthinkable almost because it well it wasn't accessible. And uh, and that you 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 learned from your from your grandparents and your parents to look for for cures, if one may call it that, was yeah. in nature. Yes, it, it, it definitely. That that is why now when I'm when I'm looking back at my career, and then like the, in in terms of Tape Mountain National Park, Tape Mountain National Park is a park for all, and then a destination that have everything for everyone. So we've got people that come for for medicinal plants. Uh, to the mountain. We've got people that come for recreation. 
We've got people that are come, coming from, from from for culture and, and heritage purposes, religious groups. So it takes me back to where I grew, grew up in Kofimbaba uh, once more again, that whereby you never needed to have money to, to actually get an access to, to, to health, to, mm. to spiritual, uh, be, whatever spiritual belief that you believe in, everything was there. Uh. Yeah, you see, we, that's, how we, that's, how we, that's how we grew up. And then we, it means we've inherited that in such that uh, when I came to, to Cape Town to, to, to further my studies, uh, my first choice was agriculture at Cape Peninsula University of Technology. So you finished school in the Eastern Cape? I finished uh, Strat 7 in the Eastern Cape. Okay. And then I came in 2004. Uh-huh. And, and in Kailicha, I, I, I did uh, my standard eight, standard nine, standard ten. Then I passed my metric in 2006. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I was majoring on the biology, agriculture, uh, physical science. You see, exactly. Yes, I yes, yes. This, they, I knew that, okay, if I'm doing these things, because it's what I grew up doing, yeah. it's going to be me- easy for me to understand and link things and eventually uh, succeed into what I, I was doing. So unfortunately, the my first choice, which was agriculture, because I grew up mostly looking after the yes. cattle and sheep and goats. Uh, my first choice was in was agriculture, which the campus is in Wellington, mm. and I was staying in Kailich. So I was thinking, now how do I get from Kailich to Wellington every morning? Uh-huh. Because I didn't have the uh, accommodation that side every morning so i decided okay let me look at, at the second option which is was nature conservation diploma nature conservation and then that in terms of the distance from kalicha there was train that train from side b no Lungile, straight to cape town so it means i'm sorted in terms of traveling so we did, where did you sta- where did you apply to study i've applied at cape peninsula university okay. of technology okay. but most you you, you, you could an opportunity to to select two first choice and second choice. Okay. So my second choice, my first choice was agricultural science, uh-huh. and then second choice was nature conservation. Uh-huh. But the campus of was nature conservation is in Cape Town, and the campus for agriculture is, is in, in Wellington. Wellington yeah. Yes, I in terms of my traveling, because the only way that I could get to to school was was using the train, mm-hmm. uh, because. Uh, Taxis to Wellington, you must take taxi to Belvin. Oh, from that's Belvin, a long then. travel. Yeah, it's a long travel. Even it's a long travel for the train as well. Because I, I had to first walk from home to the train station. Wow. You can imagine in winter. So I, I had to, to, to select nature conservation. Because I went through that career guide and look and, and check, okay, this is also similar to what uh, I'm already used to. And then at, 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 at the high school, we did go through some 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 syllabus which entailed something about something in relation to nature conservation so it was easy for me and i was very strategic in terms of choosing the <laughs> the nature conservation because i knew there was biology there and there was agriculture there yeah. so for me i was very good in, in in i was doing well in in terms in fact with in, in my metric here uh, <coughs> in biology and agriculture i think in my metric i had a in biology Wow. Then I think B or D on or C in, in agriculture. So I knew that I'm already, in terms of my age, in terms of my age, I'm already uh, old enough. Uh, so I don't want anything that I, I'm going to spend eight years doing, one, three year course. So I, I was very, very clever in terms of, I knew that I'm not going to fail these ones. So that's how I, I got enrolled in. Well, I'm sure you still had to work very hard to get, to, I mean, to get to that and to, and to, well, to get through matric and then, of course, do your diploma as well. Yes, uh, you see, for... But for, you had a love for it. I had a love for it. For me, for me, the thing is, there was a gap, four-year gap between matric 2006 and when I registered in, mm. in, in CPUT in 2010. After matric, like, uh, I always refer back to where, how we grew up. After metric, most cases during uh, our time, you must go and work. Yeah. Go and work somewhere after metric. They were, they, they were the education going further in your studies. It was always something that is at the last of the, the list in terms of the priority because you, you, the first thing you think about your parents don't have money. Otherwise, they have mm. to sell a ship or a cow for you to 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 to, to be able to register and, and to further studies. We are not aware of which I think part of this conversation you, you did mention that we're going to get there. We're not, about, we're, we're not informed about the career exhibition. We never go to career ex- exhibitions, especially in the Eastern Cape, whereby you will inform that you don't need, your parents don't need to have money. Your parents don't need to 
to have worked directly. There's uh, NSFAS, there's bursaries. We are, we are not uh, aware mm. about that. So the first thing after work, after your metric, Go you work. going to work. So that's what I did. When I got up to my metric, I uh, uh, went to work in, in Kilani Gardens on the lift company. There's a lift company called Newland Elevators. So I was a workshop assistant, welding, grinding, drilling, sort of any kind of an engineering kind of job that I was doing. For the first four years, that's when I was like, I, I, this is really <laughs> But your <laughs> heart was still, and your mind was still, you wanted to do this course. I still wanted to do this course. Uh, because I could see on National Geographic, uh, TV, on Kruger, it was very fascinating and nice, beautiful to see animals, the animal interactions, uh, po- population dynamics. Uh, like, w- w- in, like in some of the, of the topics in our biological uh, textbook, the population dynamics, the one that kills another one, food webs, uh, food chains. So I was always fascinated about that until I decided in 2009 that I'm resigning at, uh, at Newland Elevators Lift Company and then I'm going to do my studies full time. Mm. Yeah, and then they, they, then they, 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 they try to persuade me not to. If I'm, I want to go to school since I was still young, they say, no, you rather go into engineering, we're going to pay for you everything. And I was like, hey. Whatever I want, I want to do. I don't want to fail. I want to do something that I'm passionate. I'm very passionate about something that I would love to do. And then that's not that's something that is going to encourage and push me to to go all the way and succeed within and the set time. Good, yeah. Within the set time that I've I've, I've I've set for myself. Eventually, they had to let me go. Although they, they I had a very good relationship with them, even when even when I was studying full time during school holidays, they would always say Bulani, Bulani. They would used to call me Bulani. Bulani, Lani, Lani, come here, come here. So I would go and work just to have some money for to buy train ticket when the schools are open. But eventually, I, I, I was I, I've passed my my, my, my diploma. In, in How long was time. it? One year? It was a three year. Three oh three years. Wow, three, yeah. so it's a long time. Yeah, it's a three. Year. It's a three two years and uh, theoretically. Yes. You attend on daily basis. You do assignment, uh, school uh, projects, group work. And then on your on your third year now, you must be placed at, uh, in one of the nature reserves or in one of the national park where you you are doing you you actually practicing putting mm. in practice what you have learned throughout the the the, the, the two years mm. in, in in the university. Then you fortunately for CPUT uh, University of Technology, what we normally what they normally do, they provide they invite. Uh, for example, within Cape Nature Conservation, they will invite City of Cape Town Nature, they will invite South African National Parks, they will invite NGOs, they will uh-huh. invite private uh, entities uh, to, to say, okay, look, we've got 30, in say, second year or third year students, they will be doing practicals, then you then you can take them. So it's, it's, it's you get, they get labor. Then you're also learning at the same time. Yeah. But you are still a student, you, you must be registered. You're submitting modules, you're doing your research. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, so, so, so. I and for you, to... you were just incredibly happy that finally got to the point where you could do this. I was, you know, I was very happy. Because also, also in, 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 like, uh, evidence that I was, I, was, I, was, I was in line with what I actually wanted to do. I always uh, encourage uh, the youth to choose very wisely because you don't want to start with something that you, 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 of don't, course. you, you don't want to do you, you, you can imagine hey, from six o'clock you wake up eight o'clock you must be at work mm. that two that two hours that you are going at work you already got an anxiety mm. you are not even at work mm. you spend almost the rest of your life at work in doing something that you don't know yeah money is not everything you can't buy happiness but now we want to talk also then about about uh, yes when you were done and you graduated um, and and then finding work, how how, how does that process work? Uh, I must say I was so fortunate because, like I was saying, uh, we I was placed for the in-service training. We call it in-service training, so work integrated learning. The, the practical yeah. part that the you did. The practical part, mm. yeah. I was placed back home now in, in, in Eastern Cape again, in the park called uh, Mountain Zebra National Park in 2013. I was a student, the nature conservation student, 2013, uh, in Cradock. Mountain Zebra National Park is in Cradock, which is about uh, 200 kilometers away from my hometown. Yeah. So I was also privileged. I could I could go home whenever I could a chance. So our f- after the graduation there, uh, 
uh, when my contract was about to end, then there was a position available, the temporary contract position, BSP uh, positions of environmental monitor. Mm. So I was lucky now to be absorbed within the park as an environmental monitor. Environmental monitors, it's uh, it's 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 one of the the programs of of of, of national uh, DFFE Department of Environmental Affairs. One of their programs where they give uh, uh, young guys contracts to work in the nature to yeah. improve their skills and, and and so that they can grow within the organization within the the industry. So I was one of the luckiest to get environmental monitor contract. Uh, now it's 2014 now after my in service training year mm. I'm still in Mountain Zebra National Park but and I was I start applying because at least now I've got a qualification yes, now. at least I yes. can start looking because it's a time. everyone always dream to have a permanent employment so within four months after my graduation I, I got another internship with Cape Nature within Cape Nature I was based in Stellenbosch as a mammal technician so I was assisting the researchers different kind of researchers into in and, and also doing a, a monitoring of of game and mammals and doing surveys in different nature reserves of the western cape uh, nature and then even with, the, with within that one uh didn't last long it, it took me up until towards the end of the the, the contract which was 2015 the, it was a Sebenza program that is is is, is a, it's a program for by uh, by sandy Mm. So from there, I got a position now with the baboon management. I was managing the baboons, looking after the baboons on daily basis in someone's town. Remember, the baboons need to be to remain in the national environment, yes, not to yes. come to the location to the private space and, and interfere. So we, my um, my task was to look after five, uh, to look after nine baboon monitors, baboon rangers. So I was a field manager. Meaning okay. I okay. was managing their mm. logistic day-to-day -day operations, placing them where the baboon troops are, making sure that we keep the baboons into the green belt, away from the open space. So, but still, I, 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 I always wanted to to be to be a ranger and a permanent one. And then remember, I started my career. It begins in South African national parks, which is Mountain Zebra National Park. Yeah. So now, I knew that my career it's there. But now you're parks. getting lots of experience in different areas also. I'm getting different mm. experience in, in, in different areas. And all those experience that I'm getting now, they actually, I'm, I'm actually putting in practice what I've learned yes. again at, at, at the university during the theoretical classes. So I've moved then with uh, with uh, Human Life Solutions where we're doing a urban purpose management. <coughs> then I've moved to, I secured my first employment now. Uh, at West Coast National Park. I'm not sure if you know Langaban. Langaban, yes, West yes, Coast I do. National West Park. Coast. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And that was, that was the first time I got to be permanent field ranger now. Back to St. Parks, but they're different national yes, parks. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I was a marine ranger there. So being a marine ranger, you're doing ranger work, law enforcement, permitting inspections, uh, fish surveys, and then uh, environmental education and awareness to communities. Small skills that you're talking about, managing that, taking their permits, assisting them to secure their permits, and also educating them about the quotas, how much fish you can take, uh, in terms of permit inspection and permit conditions, and also managing the islands. There's Malchas mm. Islands and Chatten Islands. Now and then during the season, we used to go and sleep there for four days. You go there, you stay there for four days in the island, then you come back because we're doing a bed monitoring, a marine bed monitoring. Mm, mm, mm. So within a year, as a, as, as a field ranger now. So I've started to be a ranger and then I'm permanent. At least now I'm, I'm sorted. And then within that space, I always wanted to grow within the, the organization because we start from the ground. And then as you, you, as, you, as you grow within the organization, as you learn things, you're getting developed, you're getting trained. Now you also want to step the ladder now so that you can also give more responsibilities and also you can influence the decision making uh, in terms of, of, of the concept conservation so then uh again i have to i move again to eastern cape parks and and, and tourism agents uh, which is uh, in eastern cape east london as a section ranger now from marine ranger to a section ranger. yeah so section ranger you you're managing the the, the, the the whole section 
it's like a section manager managing managing the whole section in it's terms a lot of, the, of responsibility in terms of the infrastructure roads hiking trails vegetation management fire management a waste management a law enforcement and compliance environmental education and awareness you've got about five management uh, plans that you need to implement using uh, the available resources in terms of your human resource your budget uh, working very closely with stakeholders also because remember you cannot have everything mm, so mm. that collab- collaboration in in most in most cases con- in terms especially in terms of nature conservation and sand parks collaboration with stakeholders and, and donors and and and, and, and it, it it really maximizes the resources it also help us to cover areas that we in if have covered for mm. example for example if we're working very closely with, with law enforcement stakeholders such as yourselves they specialize in, in criminal procedures act whereas we we, we we environmental management inspectors or rangers, we specialize on environmental crimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Environmental management acts. So if when we are working with them, let's say we are on the roadblock with them, if there's anything that related to drugs, firearms, they take care of that. We are there to support them. If there's anything that related to abalone, for example, or, or protea flower, that that's is... Where, oh, yeah, yeah. That's where you're coming from. Involved, yeah. So whereas if there was only police on that roadblock, they, w- they might not have uh, effectively prosecute yeah. into that case so that's why because they, you know, they wouldn't necessarily know you i mean you mentioned for example proteus one doesn't necessarily know which plants or whatever it may be its status I mean, is it endangered mm. is it near threatened mm. what's its importance mm. why those people say not suppose if they needed to have a permit what kind of permit they're supposed to checking the, uh, the expiry date of that permit is it valid yeah. and how to, to cooperate yeah. so stakeholder engagement so there's a lot yeah i mean i'm thinking now there is there's a lot happening you spoke about emergency situations also for example when it comes to fires uh, uh, and 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 so on um but I, w- i want to ask you i mean is is the in terms of in terms of sort of your your day and what your day entails and 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 challenges also that you come across but i also want to flip that and say really really memorable experiences i mean what would be sort of your highlights uh, uh being a park and having been a park ranger for so many years yeah i've got uh, quite a, a lot of, of of highlights but for for because of the time one the first the first one it was in mountain zebra national park Mountain Zebra National Park, they, they introduced the lions. They reintroduced the lions following more than 50 years of their absence based on, on, on the history and research. Apparently, they, they used to roam those areas there. So they were reintroduced. Uh, uh, fortunately enough, the park manager, the current park manager for Tim Mountain National Park at the time, she was a park manager there uh-huh. in 2013. So we put together, I was a student, she was a park manager. Uh-huh. And now I'm back here, she's a park manager, now I'm a senior secretary. But anyway, introduced the lions after the indo- lions were introduced about three lions then we have to be kept in the boma for 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 i think for about four months and then so that they can get used to the area yes. acclimatize with the situation and then afterwards then they were released and when they were released everyone was like hey, i'm resigning especially <laughs> the elder rangers say, i'm resigning i can't be working with the rangers <laughs> remember in game parks you know you you walk in the field where there's dangerous animals you walk among the dangerous oh. animals yeah but the key thing is you you, you are trained to track the the, the, the the food tracks how fresh they walk in this area then you have to change direction in the wind direction so then our the next to our office uh in one particular morning very cold winter i was wearing a big jacket with my my with my earphones on not not my earphones with my my hoodie on yes yes my yes. hands in the pocket because it was very cold We just uh, informed about the, the duties for the day. So I walked back to, to the bathroom. Something said I must lift up my, my head. When I lift my head, then there was two lions <gasps> standing in front of me. Two oh, wow. lions standing right in front of me. At that, at that time, you don't know, I can't tell you even today how I've managed to, what made me to think that way, but it, it oh what happened. Oh my gosh. Then, I slowly reversed, slowly keeping my eyes on the lions, and the lions were moving also slowly, but not that fast, showing that they, they, they are ready to attack, but they were just also fascinated, wanted to investigate what is it, what is what is what is going on. Then I reversed slowly, then I turned, they couldn't rush back to the office. When I get to the office, I couldn't say what was happening. I keep on pointing. <laughs> 
Then the then my my section ranger eventually I informed my then section ranger senior section ranger, uh, Mr. Craig Williams, that the lions are right here, right behind and, us. And and that would be out of the ordinary. They wouldn't usually come so close to where your where your officers are. Is that unusual? It it is. It was unusual. And then remember, it, they introduced the lions. We were still trying to 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 to. There was a lot of research going on. Even myself, I was doing my research on the on the prey selection of the lions. Which which animals are they killing? Which ones are they targeting? So we're still trying to to monitor the, their behaviors, their movements, to take their movements, and distribution. Which areas are they frequenting? And also, we're using also the the GPS. They had a caller so that we can check which areas are, are they. So that if we've got people that are working, the conductors, we can, the section ranger can see. But where just that control. morning you didn't check? That morning. Gosh. Remember, the senior section ranger is the one that is supposed to check oh. where the lions in that morning. So it, oh, we, we all word. just arrived. We had to all just arrive. No matter what, to go to the office, you will go to the community and check where the, where the lions so that they can inform, educate the visitors and also the conductors where the lions are. If there's conductor working in a specific area, then the conductor need to move to, to a different area because the lions are within the, uh, the vicinity. And and you as a ranger, and, I, and I'm so fascinated by the idea when you said now that yes, you are trained as a ranger, but also now I'm thinking back to what you were t- telling us, your days on the mountains in, in, in the Eastern Cape. So you're trained to see, um, uh, to, 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 to sniff, you are trained to, to, to look at the footprints, you are trained to, 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 to track um, and then, of course, part of that would be that you would be trained to know when an, a wild animal is in, if for lack of a better term, in attack mode, or when uh, when the animal is sort of passive. And in that moment, you even still think about it. I mean, these lions, if they're looking at you, uh, the reality is, I mean, one hears us also always that that animals uh, in in that regard, they are also naturally they they are inclined to to to, to defend themselves. So even if they were not, even if they weren't there to attack, they see you. They could. Is it so that they could very easily now attack? Yes, uh, they, they they could. They could have. They could have. Uh, I, I'm I'm just happy that it was uh, very cold in the morning. Maybe they were still also, yeah, <laughs> uh, because uh, wow. they, they, one of the, the of the female lions, they had a tendency. She had a tendency of chasing after vehicles and stretching the tires and all that so obviously you, if 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 i could have moved a few inches forward maybe today <laughs> i wouldn't be know. seeing you here. yeah 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 so yeah yes in terms of we are being trained we are trained from the school when it, there's a module called animal studies at uh, at a university which deals about uh, animal behaviors seasons where animals are aggressive where if you you come across a, a rhino for example yeah. what you must do how you must react how you must behave in in front of if you are encountering an animal we are also even trained in terms of for law enforcement we're not doing firearm uh, uh, firearm competence because we've also been trained to handle yeah. firearm we are also even trained in the field when can you shoot an, an, an animal when you cannot shoot yeah at what distance uh, which which, which which uh, behavior you need to look into and then you can actually take a decision to say, this one is really coming for me. So looking at the wind direction when you are on patrol, walking in the field, very important. Walk few few steps and take a, a 360 degree, checking around, check your surrounding. What's All going? the time. Pick up the, the tracks, who was walking around here, look at the tank, uh, is it fresh? Maybe let's say for example, it's a, it's a, it's a buffalo tank. Is it fresh? You can put your hand in there. You can feel that it's, 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 it's still warm. It means the buffaloes are really in the vicinity. Then uh-huh. you need to keep your house. Then you need to inform uh, the, the team that you are going with. Maybe you are going with researchers or you are going with visitors. Or maybe you are doing a, a kiting because I also did the kiting. So remember, when we, grew, when, I, when we grew up in Eastern Cape, in the mornings, very cold, especially in the winter, the, we, we will use when the, when the cows the cow will defecate, then you'll run, will rush to the to the tongue of the cow to put in your your feet because your feet are cold. We did, when you grow up, we didn't have even shoes, oh. you have shoes, proper clothing. If if a, 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 a cow is urinating, you rush there so that you can keep your 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 your, your, your feet warm because before you while maybe while you are heading the the culture to to the field. So remember now, 
now in the field in the national park so now if you, you see a dung a dung you see, let's say it's a buffalo one you check how cold it is are there any insects around it or or beetles it means it's, it's an old one and then looking at the dung you look at the tracks which direction is the decoy mm, which mm, it, mm. also looking at the wind direction so that you can the best way is to always avoid weird animals. You must yeah. avoid encounter with animals. But but from the sounds of it, and, and we, I can't believe that we've run out of time so quickly, Polina. Uh, there's so many things we still wanted to speak about. Uh, but but uh, when we speak on, yeah, on, on this particular show, a segment on Education PR 94, part of it is also, you know, of course, to inform, as you said earlier on, at that point, you didn't realize it when we were, you were at school, the many options that you were available. So it's important for us to get that out there, that, you know, being a park ranger and in terms of a career choice, but very importantly also from what you're saying, um, uh, one can pick up that one also needs to have a particular, let's say, or particular characteristics. Um, I'm thinking about, for example, one can get into situations like with the, the one you're related now with the lions and one has to be able to stay calm. Uh, the other one, many of the other things that you mentioned, for example, one has to be very, very observant, details orientated. Um, and so perhaps in our last minute or so, uh, just speak to us a little bit about that. Anybody that's listening right now that's thinking this is an interesting career choice, what sort of advice would you give them? The advice that uh, I'll give them is firstly, they need to look at uh, the subject that they are doing at, at, at the school level. Their parents, their families, their friends, they need to, to support them. And then they need to, to, take, to pay attention into career expos yeah. that takes place. I think nowadays there is uh, such platforms and awareness. Uh, uh, for, conserv- for nature conservation, it's mainly the major subject is your uh, physical science, your biological science, your your agricultural science. I don't know how how they call them this. Maybe it's 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 it's, it's life science, but it's biology. Yeah, yeah it's biology or life science. Or life science well. Yeah, and your maths, maths very important. Mm. And then and then you need to pass them at least more than fifty percent. I, I I guess even though that they, they have not passed meet the, the actual minimum requirements. I know that for the for the fact. CPUT, Cape Peninsula University of Technology. Mm. They've got uh, a, a, a nature conservation course, extended program. Instead of doing strictly in three years, they, they can extend your program into four years, even yeah. though if, uh, if you don't meet uh, the actual minimum requirements. Okay. So there's also people that, that do it in four years, the same uh, diploma, some they do it in three years because of maybe you didn't meet yes, one Yes, the requirements. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, also but, you, but you say C- uh, CPUT. Um, you know what? No, we have to wrap up now, unfortunately. Okay. Our technician is indicating that, we, that we're out of time. But I, you did say CPUT, and I, and I think for any further inquiries, um, our listeners can also, I suppose, Google that and, 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 and look at what is required to be a National Park Ranger. Thank you so much, Bulilani, for joining us this morning. Really, really loved your story. Lots more questions questions that we'd love to unpack. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity and, and the invitation. I've not even touched him on the National Park where I work. <laughs> exactly. No, <laughs> we're going even... to we're gonna have to continue. We're yeah. going to have to make another appointment with you and take you away from park ranging for a day. <laughs> have a beautiful Tuesday, Bulilani. Right, thank you so much and to the viewers as well.